We've all seen the headlines by now. I even quoted it in a couple of my videos. The Quest 3 will be twice as powerful as the Quest 2. What does that really mean though? Most of this stands for Quest 3's new chip, Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Generation 2. In this video, we're talking about that chip, some early reported benchmarking on this performance, and how it stacks up, at least on the surface level, against the Quest 2 and other gaming consoles. After we look at the numbers, I'll give you my reasons why, as stated in the previous video, the Quest 3 will still not equal current generation consoles or high-end PCs. I'm still excited for this headset, but the more research I do, the more I'm learning to manage my expectations. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of what to expect when the Quest 3 launches later this year. Even though we don't have the exact specs for the Quest 3 for Meta yet, the chip it is based on, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, will be included in the next generation of Android smartphones. This is the benchmarking along with other sources that I used in researching this video. The Quest 2's XR2 Generation 1 chip was based off of Snapdragon's A65, found in phones like the Samsung S20 here in North America. This chart shows benchmarking for various mobile chips. The XR2 Gen 2 chip is indicated by the top arrow and Quest 2's Gen 1 chip is the bottom arrow. Looking at the numbers, you're getting 2.5 times more FPS at 226 versus 89. It should also be noted in this image that the new chip also consumes nearly twice the power. I doubt Meta is going to put out a headset with half the playtime of the Quest 2, so I'm assuming they've taken steps to mitigate the added power consumption. As for the internal GPU, the XR2 Gen 2 chip is powered by an Adreno 740 versus Quest 2's Adreno 650. Sadly, Bradley reported in the video back in October of last year that the 740 is three times as powerful as the 650. Brad goes pretty deep into the nuts and bolts in the new chip in that video. I'll leave a link in the description for anyone interested. Again though, we're over two times the performance at the GPU level. The new chip can also support LPDDR5 or 5X RAM versus Quest 2's LPDDR4 or 4X RAM, meaning faster RAM. As of this video, we still don't know how much RAM will be in the Quest 3. Quest 2 ship with 6GB, while ByteDance's Pico 4 ship with 8GB, and HTC's 5XR Elite, both using the same XR2 Gen 1 chip, comes with 12GB. If the Quest 3 ships with 8GB or more of LPDDR5 or 5X RAM, that will be a significant upgrade of a Quest 2 in terms of both amount and speed. Another metric I want to cover is teraflops. A teraflop in layman's terms is a processor's ability to calculate 1 trillion floating point operations per second. It's another performance metric often used to rate processors. Upload VR posted the chart in October of last year showing the comparison for various VR headsets. The original Quest 1 can handle 0.6 teraflops, the Quest 2, Pico 4, and XR Elite can handle 1.2 teraflops. I spent hours trying to find the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2's number and couldn't other than a random Reddit post saying it was capable of 3.5, but that's Reddit so I'm taking that with a grain of salt. However, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip was capable of 2.2 teraflops. Assuming even a marginal improvement for the Gen 2 chip, and at that point we're doubling the Quest 2's capacity. For comparison's sake, a PlayStation 4 runs 1.8 teraflops, PlayStation 5 comes in at 10.3, a GTX 960 GPU, the minimum spec recommended for the Oculus Rift comes in at 2.4, and the almighty RTX 4090 GPU is the king of the hill at 82 teraflops. You take all of that together and the Quest 3 is set to be the most powerful standalone headset on the market, with each performance metric at least double the capability of the Quest 2. So why am I, as I said at the start of this video, keeping my expectations lower than most? Four reasons, in no particular order, number one. Number one, the Quest 3, like its predecessors, will be underclocked. It's important to remember that all of these numbers I just went over exist in the vacuum. Benchmarking tests are generally performing the ideal scenario, and the reality is a VR headset used for gaming is doing more things than a typical cell phone. Anyone who has ever heard their PC, laptop, or gaming console's fan running when it gets too hot will understand this. The Quest 2 CPU was severely underclocked. John Carmack, one of the architects of the Quest 2, has repeatedly said this. This is necessary for cooling purposes to prolong the life of the headset and for user comfort. When version 49 of the Quest 2's OS was launched last year, it gave another 7% of GPU performance, so Meta is still working to get more performance for developers to enhance their games. But Quest 3, like any other piece of tech, will not be running 100% of its potential. That's not how any computing device works. Number 2. Number 2. All of that increased power will not go to graphics. I said in another video that anyone expecting PC VR or PSVR 2 level graphics on the Quest 3 will be disappointed. Quest 3 is supposed to have a better resolution and field of view than Quest 2. A significant chunk of the new chip's power will be dedicated to rendering those extra pixels. So yes, the chip can absolutely do more, but it will have more to do, if that makes sense. I still believe it will be a market improvement in terms of visuals, but even that goes down to number 3. Number 3. Developers have to utilize that power. Your hardware, be it a PC, tablet, phone, or console, is only as powerful as the software driving it. Imagine owning a Lamborghini, but only driving at 30 miles per hour. Imagine having a monster of a PC setup, 128GB of RAM, an RTX 4090, the best possible monitors, but you only use it to play Roblox or Stardew Valley. Nothing against those games, but they're not exactly on the high end of graphical fidelity. 
The same is true for VR. It's up to developers, whether that's Meta's in-house studios or some of those alleged 150 third-party games Oculus Publishing is helping to fund to take advantage of Quest 3's power. Number four. Number four, the Quest 2 is gonna hold the Quest 3 back, at least temporarily. Just, just hear me out. When Quest 2 launched, even after the sales quickly outpaced the Quest 1, most developers were still releasing games that were compatible with both headsets. Resident Evil 4 VR was the first game exclusive to Quest 2, and we're just now seeing developers start to drop Quest 1 support. Meta itself is ending Quest 1 support after version 50, about two and a half years after Quest 2's launch. If you're into console gaming, this is nothing new. PlayStation and Xbox to this day still see games released on both their current generation and last generation consoles. I'm expecting some of the same to happen with Quest 3. The Quest 2, for all of its limitations, is still the best-selling VR headset ever made. It's a fair assumption then that a lot of developers, especially smaller teams that really need to produce a hit to finance future projects, will be optimizing for the more popular platform to get the biggest player base. PC VR fans have been screaming this for years now, saying that developing and optimizing for mobile VR limits the scope and scale of games that can be produced. In short, and I detailed this in my video speculating the Quest 3's launch lineup, we'll get more games releasing on both Quest 2 and Quest 3 out of the gate than Quest 3 exclusives. Personally, I hope we get a healthy mix of both. Selfishly, I want to see games like Asgard's Wrath and Lone Echo on the Quest 3, and that's not going to happen if they also have to be on Quest 2, as Quest 2 cannot handle those games. Quest 3 will be significantly more powerful than Quest 2, but I don't think it'll be light years better. More of a big step or two forward instead of a quantum leap forward. Still, I'm excited for this headset and mobile VR continuing to be capable of bigger and better games and apps. i love to hear how excited you are for Quest 3 down in the comments. I'm currently working on another video detailing the ideal things I would like to see on the next headset, so be sure to subscribe to the channel for that and other Quest 3 content. I'll be releasing many, many Quest 3 videos leading up to launch. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by tapping the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.